Hi everybody. Last year I made a video about how feminists screwed sex by teaching women that there was no obligation to consider their partner's sexual needs. These days, if a wife doesn't feel like having sex, many women feel they're absolutely entitled to shut up shop. And that's been a disaster for modern marriage. Today I want to talk about the politics of bonking, which is another story of the damage feminists have inflicted on our love lives. But this time it's happened by redefining the joys of bonking as masculine self-indulgence, men exercising patriarchal power by denying women clitoral sexual pleasure. I want to start with a funny story. It's a skit from a British comedian called Jenny Lacote, which is all about the fact that women aren't easy to please in bed. It goes like this. He labouring away pauses to ask, are you nearly there? It's hard to say, says she. He plunges on. If you imagine it as a journey from here to China, where would you be? She considers the kitchen. To me, the point of that skit is that women, giving women sexual pleasure isn't always easy. Lots of women are hard to arouse. Plenty of women don't climax regularly, if at all. Many have trouble coming during intercourse. For men, it is different. Of course, men have problems too with erections, with coming too quickly, with orgasm sometimes. But as we all know, most men really enjoy bonking, shagging, screwing, the art of sexual intercourse, which has always been the most obvious way of making love for most of us throughout history, and partly due to its role in reproduction. But what we never hear about anymore is there are plenty of women who are into traditional rumpy pumpy and prefer to come that way. Yet in modern times, these women are treated as peculiar, a rare, almost extinct species. We're living through an era of what Germaine Greer called veritable clitoromania, where feminists for decades have been promoting the idea that the clitoris is the gold standard of women's sexual response and the vagina is dead in the water. According to many feminists, women who climax easily, easily during bonking are simply a figment of men's pornographic imagination. <laughs> Let's go back to where it all started. It's certainly true that in past history, the clitoris didn't receive the attention it's due. A famous anatomy text called Gray's Anatomy erased the clitoris from the diagrams of the female genitals. But then along came the famous American sex researcher Alfred Kinsey, who in 1953 declared that the clitoris was the root of all female sexual pleasure and the vagina a sexual dead end. What's really quite extraordinary is that Kinsey reached these conclusions using a team of gynaecologists who compared the sensitivity of the clitoris and the vagina using a cotton bud. I think it's pretty funny, really. As you imagine, it's not surprising that the very sensitive tip of the clitoris is more likely to respond to tickling with a cotton bud, a Q-tip if you like, than the vagina, which tends to respond to deep pressure, as I'll explain in a little while. Next came Sherry Height, the author of a famous survey on female sexuality, which was called the Height Report, and over 3,000 self-selected women wrote about their sex lives. Height, a feminist, declared that clitoral orgasm was the real orgasm, her survey found that only 30% of women climax regularly during intercourse. But Height decided that those women had to be deluding themselves. She wrote, The pattern of sexual relations predominant in our culture exploits and oppresses women, and claimed it was a myth that penile thrusting in the vagina could actually cause orgasm. That was the start of a real attack on bonking as an act of patriarchal oppression. For many feminists, intercourse has come to symbolise male brutality. The worst example was anti-porn crusader Adrid Walken. She once described herself as a feminist, but not the fun kind. She wrote a book called Intercourse, which describes the sex act as a means of physiologically making a woman inferior, communicating to her cell by cell her own inferior status impressing it on her, burning it into her, by shoving it into her over and over, pushing and thrusting until she gives in and gives up. 
Phew, she's definitely not the fun kind of feminist. Well, this was an extreme view, but what was happening everywhere was sex therapists started promoting the idea that only small numbers of women come during bonking and that the clitoris is everything. And then there were virtue signaling men like Ian Kerner, who wrote an incredibly detailed book on going down on women. She comes first. Here he is promoting the idea that bonking doesn't do it for women. The other thing you need to know is that the clitoris is the powerhouse of the female orgasm. And during sex, uh, especially during intercourse, most positions miss the clitoris altogether. What's really funny about Kerner is he readily acknowledges that he learned to be really good at oral sex because he has trouble with premature ejaculation. So it made sense for him to promote cunnilingus because bonking was a real problem for him. I personally believe that when it comes to the female orgasm that the tongue is mightier than the sword. Now of course oral sex is great and I realize it's a really good way for many women to reach orgasm, but not all women. What I really object to are all these loud voices proclaiming the power of the clitoris and drowning out the views of those of us old-fashioned folk who still think bonking is best. There have been a few brave voices speaking out about vaginal pleasures, like my friend Beverly Whipple from Rutgers University in New Jersey, who hit the news in the early 1970s writing about the G-spot, which is an area in the vagina of particular sensitivity, sometimes linked to female ejaculation in women. Her discoveries about the G-spot led to a brief resurgence of interest in the vagina. Whipple did some fascinating work. She was a professor of nursing and she'd been hearing from women who had severe spinal cord injuries, who still told her they could reach orgasm. How was this possible if their spinal cords were severed, cutting off the clitoral pathways to the brain? So along with psychobiology professor Barry Komisaruk, Whipple traced brain activity during sexual stimulation and found another nervous pathway to, which provided sensory stimulation for orgasm. While most genital nerves connect to the brain via the spinal cord, the stimulation of areas deep in the vagina, including the cervix, connect, connect with the brain by a different pathway, namely the vagus nerve, which bypasses the spinal cord. And it's this different connection which seems to allow many spinal cord injured women to enjoy sexual pleasure. And for women who respond during thrusting, this may be part of their story. Now I've written about all this in my book, The Sex Diaries, and I'm gonna put the relevant chapter on my website you could, so you can read it. Interest in the G-spot caused the brief resurgence in promoting the pleasures of the vagina, but soon the clitoral takeover was back in play. I think that there are there is like a grassroots clitoracy movement happening, but we do make no doubt about it still live in a society and culture that is dominated by the intercourse discourse. In reality, female sexuality doesn't even really exist without the clit. I mean, if you're talking about female sexuality and not talking about the clit, then I kind of want to know what you're talking about. We're talking about female sexuality without pleasure. I can't help but wonder how much of this is driven, at least in part, by a desire to demonize the type of sex that many men particularly enjoy. What made the whole business more complicated was important work by Melbourne urologist Helen O'Connell, who made great discoveries about the anatomy of the clitoris, showing the clitoris is not just a tiny button near the, the vaginal opening, but a large, expanding, highly sensitive structure which extends up to 13 centimetres and curves right around the urethra and vagina. The entire clitoris contains spongy erectile tissue, similar to that in the clitoral glands. That's a bit you can actually see. The large clitoral structure is stimulated by vaginal thrusting. So most therapists are now saying that there's no such thing as vaginal orgasm. It's all due to stimulation of the large clitoral structure surrounding the vagina through both pressure on the clitoral glands and that bigger structure through the vaginal walls. Now, I think this research was really important, but it certainly doesn't explain why some women need that direct stimulation of the clitoral glands in order to climax, while others come easily during bonking. 
I'm all for women learning what they need, being comfortable about communicating that to their partners. Whether they prefer to follow Ian Kerner's advice that, so that she comes first through oral sex, or you can add a helping hand by including direct clitoral stimulation during bonking, or perhaps using a hand or a vibrator. I was very proud to be one of the first people in Australia to publicly promote vibrators, because I did my um, master's thesis on teaching women to reach orgasm through masturbation. But I do object to the feminist clitoracy movement, which seems intent on shutting down discussion of anything that challenges their fervent belief that the clitoris is at the heart of women's sexual response. There's a great book published in 2003 by British scientist Catherine Blackledge called The Story of V, V for Vagina, which provides evidence that it's not so simple. Blackledge describes research showing the vaginal walls are richly innovated and capable of detecting vibration, touch and pressure changes. She claims the trigger for orgasm is vibration and deep rather than surface pressure, which occurs during the rhythmic movement of, cu of coupling. Blackledge suggests that in order to experience vaginal orgasms, you need to slow down so you can think and feel the, deep into these vaginal sensations, something she suggests many women learn to do over time. But the very notion that some women learn to experience vaginal orgasms is greeted by a huge shudder from therapists who've worked really hard to convince women to relax and enjoy clitoral orgasms, which is fair enough. They're rightly nervous that we might see a return to the old Freudian idea that women achieve sexual maturity by switching focus from the clitoris to the vagina. Freud argued that frigid women fail to make the transfer of sensitivity from the clitoral stimulation they experience in masturbation to responding to the vagina, mainly because they're paying too much attention to their clitorises. Of course, I'm not suggesting we buy back into that judgmental frigidity talk. Yet the question of why some women climax vaginally and others don't has always intrigued me, even though it's verboten by feminists. I spent many years communicating with a psychology professor who's now at the University of Prague, and he's, who's done intriguing work on this, Stuart Brody. One of the things Brody looked at was women's response to Viagra. Viagra increases blood flow in the genitals, but many women don't even notice this is happening, which is research, why researchers actually gave up on Viagra as a solution to low desire in women. Brody was intrigued to discover why this is so. His group of European researchers had no trouble finding a large group of women who said they climaxed during intercourse. 38% said this happened every single time. Another 30% said it happened most of the time or half the time. What they did was measure women's vaginal blood flow while showing them erotic videotapes. And they found the women who come during bonking are much more likely to notice their arouse when there was increased vaginal blood flow than the other women. They were more tuned into their vaginas. Now, Brody speculates there's a range of reasons why women may not be sensitive to the erotic stimulations in the vagina, such as physical sensitivity or different nervous pathways from the brain to the vagina and the clitoris, or having a skilled lover, or issues of anatomical fit. But he also mentions anti-intercourse propaganda. There's an endless tirade of misinformation teaching women that bonking is something that only men enjoy and most women can't come that way. There's actually been a bunch of studies showing far more women climax during bonking than Height's much quoted 30%. Even Kinsey back in the 1950s reported that over half of his subjects reached orgasm and intercourse over 90% of the time. There's some fascinating twin studies from the UK and also from the Queensland Institute of Medical Research showing a third of the variation in women in their ability to climax in, in intercourse is due to genetic influences. So this whole area is very complex and I think it's really irritating that the whole issue has been taken over by ideology. Sex therapists are so keen to reassure women 
who need that direct clitoral stimulation that they're normal, that they're prepared to pretend that vaginal orgasms don't exist, that they're all caused by indirect clitoral, clitoral stimulation or stimulation of the underlying clitoral structure, and that none of us responded quite differently to the deep pressure sensations caused by bonking. We still have a lot to learn about what's going on here. As one example, many self-help books will tell you the classic missionary position doesn't work for women because it doesn't provide enough direct clitoral st stimulation, that stimulation of the clitoral glands. But then some um, Dutch researchers persuaded couples to have sex inside MRI machines so they could see what's going on here. In the beginning, they, they had to use really skinny couples because the MRI tunnels were a very tight squeeze. But later they were able to switch to machines which had open magnets, allowing for more space and more vigorous activity. Both Dutch and French researchers subsequently produced magnetic imaging showing the fit of the genitals during all this activity, and they've come up with a few surprises. In the classic missionary position, the penis turns out to be bent like a boomerang, bringing it nicely into contact with the front wall of the vagina, the home of the famous G-spot. I've always been rather amused by feminists who grind their teeth over the fact that most male pornography features women who love bonking and come at the drop of a hat, rather than men beavering away offering hours of prolonged clitoral stimulation. Why wouldn't men fantasise about eager women who are easy to please? That's not to say there aren't heaps of men out there for whom their partner's pleasure is uppermost in their minds, no matter what it takes. Over 30 years ago, a wonderful British agony aunt called Irma Kurtz wrote, Naturally, women think their own loving, languorous way of sex is better. And so it is for them. Recently, they've tried, been trying to bully and shame men into thinking it would be better for them too. Although the truth is, it would be less demanding, enslaving, perplexing and strenuous for a healthy man to screw a thousand women in his lifetime than to try to please one. And the potential for failure would be less. <laughs>